Welcome to Leadcast. Let's go. Intrigue. Immediately. He is my pleasure. Without delay. Hello and welcome to Leadcast episode 185. My name is Christopher Puner and with me this week I'm joined by the fabulous Alex Henderson. I don't believe you. Is your name really Christopher Puner? It is. Are you really fabulous? No. Okay, moving on. Nick Cooper is here. Hey, I'm fabulous too. He is, and so is Aiden Frost Rockarts. All right, I guess. I wouldn't I say that. think highly of all three of you. I think you guys are great, great people. How did, uh, how did, um, uh, how did your, uh, week go there, Frost? Let's knock you out of the park first. Yeah, so, um, League of Legends stuff happened. Um, I've decided that every single game I play, I want to play ranked, because ranked is fun, and uh, ranked is, like, the best way to play League. Um, but I probably played, like, 25 games of ranked this week. Um, I mean, I, and I probably lost 50% of them. Okay. I lost three series this week, though, so three series back to plot one, um, I'm good at those. I, I win, like, four games in a row, get to series, and lose two in a row. So, I mean, <laughs> it really makes me it really makes me enjoy the game sometimes, um, but I, I try to hold it together. Um, uh, there was one game where I, I, I'm, I almost did some damage to my keyboard, but that's because, like, I, I had the thing where, like, we had both their Nexus turrets down, and we were one, I was 1-1 one, one in my series, and then we got a pick on their AD carry, so we pushed into their base to win the game, and then three people towered over the Nexus, and then died, and then I was playing Jen, I tried to peel, and then I died, and then our Anivia should have recalled to wave clear, but then she got caught and died, and then they won the game, so I mean, well, that hurt. Yep. And, then, then, and then I had another series where... So I went one to two in the series, obviously, because I'm still plat two because I'm I'm never gonna get through. But I'm uh, anyways. Uh, the one game I won in that series was a game where we had double jungle solo bottom AD carry, and I played top poppy with flash exhaust, and we won that game. So I've decided that League of Legends is literally you hit play, you play whatever you want, then you have a fifty percent chance of winning. So I mean, it, it was I, I enjoy playing ranked. So yeah, I mean. I won a game with Poppy top lane with Flash Exhaust, so I'm pretty well a Poppy main now. But yeah, I've played a lot of ranked, and I won a lot of ranked, and I lost a lot of ranked. Um, it's weird. I always thought AD carry was my, was my worst role other than playing Draven, but I just play Draven whenever I can now, and I have a ton of fun, and I usually do very well. I've gotten like four quadras on him this season over the course of like 11 games. Yo. So I mean, that's pretty good, dude. Yeah. Cool, man. Um, Henderson. Yeah. You uh you play any ranked this week? Um a little bit. I the... broke my third like six game loss streak this season. Oh nice. I've had so many of those this it's season. It's cool, man. It's not a good thing. It nah man, you're gonna be you're inside. gonna be diamond by the end of this week. No, I'll be happy to make it back into plat this season, which I seriously doubt will happen at this rate. Because I'm at like actually I think like a forty six percent win rate right now. Oh shit. Yeah, no, it's it's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> I go, is, I go is there on... any reason? Like, what do you think? Why? Why? Okay, so, like, 40% of them are me just going on hardcore fucking tilt. And then I'd say, like, another 30% of them are just connection issues with people. And then I'd say another 30% of them are somebody on my team fucking snapping in the first five minutes of the game. And then yeah. taking us down with them kicking and screaming. Laning phase is emotionally stressful. It's rigorous, mate. You know, and it's like when these when you don't understand what you're doing wrong, you get extremely frustrated. And it's like I can see what a lot of these people are doing wrong. I can't get them to fix it. And Anderson, get, what? What do you want? So I was gonna say, like, you think that people snapping is bad at Uriolo? Um, out of those twenty games I've played, two of the games, um, so two out of twenty, which is pr- a pretty high percent if you think about it, for someone. 10%. Yeah, it's ten percent for my jungler going mid, taking uh, like how like ganking, taking some creeps. Our mid laner getting mad, calling our jungler the n word, then rage quitting the game. <laughs> Two out of Frost, twenty. Games, I made dude. it to plat three last season. In that behavior before, I have to say they're not quite as epic or spectacular at this level, but they happen a lot more often. Honestly. It's just so random though. It's like he literally ganked the lane, took like three minions, then our mid laner calls him like that word, and then just quits. I'm like, oh. <laughs> well, it's a rocket and leaves the game. Yeah, there's like no warning when you get into plat. It just fucking happens. And you're just like, well, fuck, I was doing so good. 
Mm. Cool. Anything else, Henderson? League or otherwise, do, man? Why don't we open it up a little about bit? This giant pile of dog shit response that Light put on Ass.fm today. Yeah, we we could do that. Do you want to say that for the dead section? Yeah, it might be the appropriate thing to, to move somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, let's 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 save that for the next one because it's going to be a little slow <laughs> this week. Okay. All right, I'm a little slow every week. Hey, Nick Cooper. Ah! Hey, hey, how's it going? I played a ton of League wait, of Legends. Wait, wait, hold up. Did I did I tell you, Nick Cooper, that today was the 15th of July? Because I definitely didn't tell anybody at the top of the show. You didn't. <laughs> well, did you say what week. episode this was? Uh, yeah, I did. 185. Okay. It. But it's also the 15th of July. So many episodes. Oh, God. I mean, you think we've done a lot of episodes? Wait until I get to talk about in our news section. <laughs> All right. Keep so, yeah, going. I've, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've played a lot of League of Legends. Some of it ranked, some of it uh, normals. Uh, ranked has been really hard. Uh, I, I get teammates who aren't very good at League of Legends, but are still at the same ELO as my opponents, who are much better. Um, so I ended up losing games that I should win. Uh, but it's not my team's fault, it's my own fault that I can't carry hard enough. So I've been dealing with that. Um, I've decided that I like playing Yasuo and he's very fun. And he's really fun in the jungle, especially with the new Devour enchantment. Uh, because, I hate you. Because he... You're an evil person. Stop <laughs> talking. Person. No, don't tell people. Don't tell people. Just, 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 just no. <laughs> Stop it. So the very first game I played it, uh, I went 18, 4, and 12, and won super hard. Uh, but after that, it's been kind of off and on. Like, I'll win some, then I'll lose some. But Yasuo is a really fun champion to play. Uh, so I've been playing him. Rengar is really fun. I had a game uh, where I played Jungle Rengar, and I got 37 kills in the game, and we lost. Um, but it's okay, because it was a lot of fun. I had a um, support Zillion who was on my team who just kept using his speed boost on me, so I was a speedy cat, jumping back and forth between bushes. Uh, so that was a really good time. Are you evil incarnate? Pretty much. I've been playing, uh, let's see. I've been playing Rengar, Yasuo, Echo. I played Fuck some you and your champion pool, <laughs> I played some Akali, I played some Kale with the new Devour. Oh I played. I played a lot of Xin Zhao. Just a lot of cancer all over the place. You're a terrible person. I know, but it's been really fun. But yeah, that was my week. Oh, neat. I, um, I really, really, really hate that they keep trying to make Devour a thing. Because every time it happens, somebody, like, just this group of champions becomes broken as fuck for a couple weeks until they nerf the item into Oblivion. And then it's just like, well, there goes any chance I had at doing anything useful during this time frame. It, like, it turns people like Zin and Yi into assassins. And it's just like, I, what, what, what do I do? Yeah, um, luckily I haven't seen too many Yi's or um, any anyone you would really expect. Don't uh, say I've anything. They have been all the time. They don't know I've, it's their time to shine, man. Yeah, I've seen a lot of. Uh, let me let me see. I've seen a lot of Aurelias. I've seen a, a ton of Shivanas. Oh my god. Shivanas OP. I've been steamrolled by a couple of Zinjows. Yep, uh, Jax Kale is really 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 strong. Basically, anyone who has on hit already on their kit. Uh, and build something like, you know, Blade Would of the Rune King. Would naturally complement well with attack speed. And yeah, exactly. Hit. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why we haven't been seeing Yi too much. I mean, Fingers he's perm abandoned plat. He's oh, perm abandoned he? plat. Yeah. Um, okay. I was laughing. I think we were joking with um, some people last night that, um, the jungle bands right now for my ranked games, like, are literally, like, five junglers. Both Runeglaive and Devourer are so good right now. It's like, literally, we see, like, uh, Master Yi banned, um, Nidalee banned because Nidalee uses Runeglaive. Um, Shivana, uh, Sej is still sometimes banned. I don't know why. I see Gragas banned most games. It's like there's so many good junglers right now because of Runeglaive and uh, Devour that it's it's crazy. And I, I mean, Cinder Hulk is really good too. Yeah, that's I true. To totally tried my favorite troll build ever earlier, or I guess yesterday now. Um, and that was Gangplank with Runeglaive top. Ooh. Because his Q procs the, with the Runeglaive thing there, you pick up that and Static Shiv, and you're pretty much deleting creep waves with one Q. And then on top of that, I think I had, oh, what was it? Void Staff, Leandries, and Death Cap for all the magic pen I gotta get my hands on. And then when you crit with that uh, that Static Shiv, it was just, oh my god, so much damage. <laughs> crit for like a thousand, like 20 minutes into the game. That's crazy. That's honestly insane. 
Yeah, it had really, really high mid game potential, and then it fell off really, really hard. Yeah. Um, Nick, I'm not sure if you mentioned it. Like, I, I kind of missed a little bit of your week there. But um, did you mention our um, like we saw the wonderful Trundle support main in rank? I and then did we tried not. It? I did you not go into that. Yeah. So wait, we we played against someone Trundle support? No, we played it. Yeah, we saw that on uh, Reddit. Okay. Though, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, there's a guy who plays Trundle support. His account name is Trundle support, which is fantastic. And he's what forty four and three. I believe so. Yeah, Some, something like that. He has a ninety three percent win rate on no. support trundle. Yeah, I For real. promise you. Look it up. Lock him right now. Oh my he duels just... with a vein main. Yeah, he duels with someone who plays vein. Um, I'll look it up real quick. Oh, the they numbers. do the the pillar condemn. Yes, thing. Oh, it works so well, dude. Oh god. my god. <laughs> so of course, Frost and I, the uh, the professional bot lane, we decide to try it, and boy, it's so much fun. There was one. The the best one we had was uh where he was casting uh condemn and during the time that uh he he was casting it on the enemy Corky during the time that Frost was casting uh, on Corky and the the end of the knockback I casted pillar so it was like just like stunned out of nowhere and uh, we ended up winning lane actually super hard but losing the game. Uh, because it, I think it ended up being ganked by every single other person in the game. Mm -hmm. Because Victor's OP, that's what happened. Victor oh, fucking like was eight yeah. zero or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please stop talking about Victor that's so nuts. I can hold on to him for a couple patches longer. Hey, Anderson, how does it feel to be uh, maining the best mid laner in the entire game? Well, <laughs> this happened once before. I played Anivia during season one. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, that's right. Anivia used to set games on fire. Yeah. Um. Cool. No, but one more thing. You know if um, you can win you're... a game give by getting nothing but Sunfire Capes and Anivia, you're doing something right. <laughs> I miss when oh. they would stack, man. That's when I won that oh game. Oh my god. I would just run up into the enemy team, and then I'd turn into an egg, and it would keep burning at the time <laughs> while I was an egg. So, you know, it was just a giant fireball of 200 damage per second. It was like Fireball Karthus, but better. Um, We were kind of met talking about this on the LCS show um, that uh, Nick and I recorded with Hillman. And um, we were saying, like, the the, 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 the divide... Holy crap. Start over. Um, the diversity <laughs> of <laughs> of different lanes and stuff right now is kind of interesting. Like, top is very diverse. Like, you can have, like, a bunch of different roles. Like, anything from, like, some damage tops to mainly tanks. But, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff played. Uh, jungle, there's kind of, like... There's a lot of jungle picks on this new patch. I mean, last patch, there was kind of, like, a, like th two, two or three, two or three really, yeah. really 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 good ones but this patch i think like there's a ton of good jungle picks um for support i think support's the most diverse lane like you can play i was talking about support being like the um flex position on the team like oh we need another caster so we'll pick any oh we need uh someone to get picked so we'll pick thrush oh we need a tank so we'll pick shen or nautilus right um and then 80 carry like all most 80 carries are good except for like um lucian, um, lucian and, and um lucian and misfortune for example right um and then we were looking at mid lane and I think we had a we had a kind of a, a a pretty good debate last night about the state of mid lane, and um, I was saying that the only good mid laners that are played in competitive are Azir, Ezreal because of Runeglaive, and then um, Victor. And someone was trying to argue again, pulling up the um, CK and all these um, uh, game vod, not vods, um, discussion threads from the past week, and literally every single game discussion thread, it was literally game. One, Ezreal versus Vi Ezreal versus Victor. Two, Ezreal gets banned, so it's Victor versus Azir. Game three, it's Victor versus Azir. And that was like six um, games in a row be before we saw an Orianna pick, where but she got stomped. I mean, like, it's literally Victor versus Azir slash Ezreal every single game. And, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do to change it. I don't want them to nerf the champions, because I don't... Okay, I feel like Victor is overpowered. I don't feel like Azir is overpowered, though. Shut up. And I, I don't want them to, like... I don't want them to nerf Azir... Because he's picked all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, sure. I I kind of agree. I don't know. It's just weird that I don't know why they're picked. Like I don't know why they have such a huge pick percentage. Even though, like, I mean, I can understand Victor because he does retarded damage, and Ezreal because Runeglaive's broken. But I mean, I feel like the way that they're gonna deal with it is just by completely uh, obliterating the champion, and I hope that doesn't happen. Anyway, That's anything else in your uh... champion, obviously. <laughs> Anything else in your week, Nick, before we dive deep into character <laughs> analysis on Victor? Jesus. <laughs> no, that's it. Let's dive straight into Oh, okay. Into that. Oh, okay. Um, well, I have to talk about my week first before nope. we talk about Victor. Uh, that's less important. You're Go right, because I didn't do very much this week. 
<laughs> uh, I was really busy with a lot of other stuff, a lot of work and shit, and dealing with a lot of other sort of things. But I did manage to play a few games of League of Legends, much to uh, much to the dismay of Frost here. When the other <laughs> night I was like, "Yo, dog, I'm going to play." something crazy and he convinced me to play something normal and then switched his role and didn't play tom kench and then i got it in my head that ap uh tom kench was going to be a good idea and by and large it wasn't bad the e- ratios uh, are shit watch your mouth the ratios aren't bad and um okay they're pretty bad but i played that game pretty well for what i had picked that wasn't it wasn't bad um put a lot of tom kench he's a lot of fun uh, and you can pretty much play that character anywhere, and he'll be he is silly use- shit. useful, I suppose. Um, Chris, remember that time that you were just sitting at Wolf Camp waiting for them to respond? I believe I was. <laughs> I believe I was texting somebody. I was also yeah. like not sober at the time, so uh, let's not hold that against me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least That's you didn't an die outlier, in a professional game. Yes, you got it. Yeah, exactly. Rip virus. Yeah, they're just like what? Out of nowhere, Chris Puner from Lee Cast is, c- comes out of the the Wolf Camp and uh, Dyrus First Blood. Crazy. Um, cool. And then that's pretty much all I did with my week. So yeah. Before we before we get into rising news, you guys want to talk any more about Victor or like what? Um, no, I, I just think that later. he's dumb. Okay. Leave Victor alone. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get into the rising news then. This is going to be kind of a, a lighter version of this um, of this section because there's not wrong. there's not a lot. Henderson, stop. There's not a lot. <laughs> there's not a lot of news to cover per se. Like if you go to the front page, you, there's still stuff on there from last week. Very little has happened. Um, no patch. No PB. Anything. No reworks. No rebalancing. Yada yada. Just like a lot of community stuff. So we're gonna talk about yeah, we totally other things last week too. Kind of. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. What the hell did I even say I was gonna talk about here? Victoria, right, like, you got okay. So the first thing to talk about is we mentioned the Victoria skins getting a survey a couple weeks ago. I don't remember what episode specifically this happened in, but the survey question was, "What would you think about selling the Victoria skins to those who didn't earn it via, you know?" Uh, via gold or higher and if you get the skin you get uh, a chroma for it equal to your rank or you know representative of your rank and you get everyone below it as well um so riot post they are not going to sell them uh the chroma thing is still to be to be determined that could happen based off of your actual ranking for everybody that gets the victorious skin like i personally think it'd be a pretty cool idea to give it to everyone who gets ranked and then you just have a different chroma based off of your actual rank but uh yeah there's there, there's a bunch of interesting things happening there um yeah but nobody should be able to buy anything i don't think yeah i don't like the idea of it being sold but I, I, I'd be okay with it being given out to, you know, just everyone that got ranked. And then, you know, oh, hey, Chroma. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it still rewards you based off of your rank, and it's not super, like, exclusive. <laughs> right. Um, oh, and in this post, the, I, I honestly don't remember what rider this was, also mentioned that the Victoria skin this year is for Marksman. So, an ADC. Can we all make a guess right now? Yes. Sure. Sever. Next. Mm, Sever's a really good guess, though. Uh, Ezreal. Ash. He said marksman, not mage, Chris. <laughs> Tom Kench. He said the marksman, real... not shit tier champion. The Whoa! real answer oh, is Amma. Um, uh... say Bard? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> well, seeing as the two right answers are already chosen, being Sivir and um, fucking Ash, um, I'm going to choose Callista. <laughs> <laughs> One who they just nerfed by just flat out reducing the effectiveness oh, of the got, on the champion. You, you gotta you got um, uh, find new, give people a new reason to buy her, dude. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. It feels like such just a broad, like heavy-handed nerf to her. It's just like, oh, okay. I, guess I think it was more like just like like a, a collective like hand on her shoulder, just like pulling her around, be like, no, you need to sit, you need to sit down now. Victor does too much damage, reduces AP by ninety percent or ten percent. I mean. <laughs> Each right. point of AP only gives you uh, nine, nine, point nine. Actual AP. point nine, yeah, AP. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. Anyway. Oh, god dang. I honestly think it's Ash, because she had a rework this season. Um, that's pretty much the only reasoning I have there. And Sivir seems like a good guess, too, just because she's been pretty influential this season so far. Um, other than that, you guys, you guys fucked around with Tom Kench yet? Yes. What do you think of him? 
I love him. I think he's great. He's so much fun. You do the weirdest stuff. I okay. I love my fa- the most satisfying thing with that champion is eating somebody, one of your allies, when they should have died. And then like, where did I go? Oh, oh my god, thank you so much. And you're just like, I feel so useful right now. I, I died love- because somebody ate me once. <laughs> oh, I, I also love licking the shit out of people in lane. I think uh. it's so funny. I believe Frost was just like, oh man, hit him with your tongue again, lick him up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> That's, and then he always like he ganks my lane and then he like licks my creeps and I'm like stop licking my stuff and claiming it as your own and he taxes my lane. <laughs> I'm sorry. One, two, three, crunch. I can't help no, it. He's super trolly though. I mean, like uh, Nick almost maybe rage quit a game. <laughs> I was playing Vayne. I flash into the enemy team to like secure a kill, and he just like fucking eats me and just pulls me back, and I'm like, no, I I literally wanted to quit the game. <laughs> yeah. I had I had uh, Kagugi do that to me multiple times. A friend of ours, he was learning how to play him support, and then I'd just be up there, and you know I'd dash forward with Caitlyn with my uh, net, and then get, run up there to get the kill. And then all of a sudden, he'd just grab me, and be like, "Henderson, no, you're in danger." I'll just be like, oh, "Kagugi, that was such an easy kill." I can um, tell you how I how, how I've seen him in rank. I've seen him th- four games in rank so far. Um, he's never been on my team, but um, uh, so I've played against him four times in ranked at plat two-ish ELO and he's lost all four games he's played but I, I don't think he's bad I think he's hard to play I think he's really good as the support I think he's an ass jungler first of all um but I mean I, I think he's good his Q's good his shield thing is the be- one of the best abilities in the entire game his ult's terrible but the passive on it's good because like extra damage is ridiculous and then his um uh his eat moves good only on your allies because Oh, you're trading in lane, and then your ally... Like, if they focus your AD carry, you eat them and run away. If they focus you, you put on a huge shield and you continue to trade. Like, it is so good. Oh my god. That champion, his laning is so... It's just frustrating. It's like it's like laning against old Desire Ash lane, like that amount of frustration, but in a different form, <laughs> because you just can't kill them. <laughs> the, the bend over and take it lane, you mean? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I... I don't know why he hasn't won any games I've played against him. Maybe it's because I'm on the other team and I'm just better. But, um, <laughs> no, but I honestly think he will be a really good support just due to his shield and his eat move in lane. And then his Q is just ridiculous for, like, poking and stuff. It is. Yep. I like him. I like him a lot. The scaling on his Q isn't bad. Yeah. Point seven. Wait, I think he's bad. I think he's a terrible champion. I think he's the bard of League of Legends. I. What about him? disagree i uh, i just feel like none of his skills are very i don't, I don't feel like they synergize well together what um, they don't synergize at all no yeah i i, I feel like his by his all right his devour is amazing uh either on an, an enemy or an ally that's a very good skill uh his q is very very underwhelming uh it feels like you, you know it's not supposed to do damage but it actually you know you can, does zero damage you know you can like eat people from far away with it right uh, yeah, I, I realize that. Okay. But you also have to have three stacks on a melee it also champion has a, it against also a ranged has a, champion. A slow, like... I mean, yeah, like it, a twenty five percent slow. It, which no, it gets better with rank, but the, not the whole, something important. The whole deal being that in lane, if you're coordinating with your AD carry, you hit him. The tongue has a pretty long range for what it is. It's not bad. Um, you can lick somebody, and your your uh, AD carry can get in there and do some lay, lay down some like auto damage, man. Like it. It's not by himself. Yes, sure, fine. He's underwhelming, but in coordination with somebody else, he allows you to do some pretty incredible things. Maybe um, I, I, just, I just feel like his passive his passive is basically useless in lane uh, unless you're fighting against a melee support because the chances that you're gonna get three stacks onto an AD carry are so astronomically low that you probably shouldn't even put a point into it if you're trying to 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 kill the opponent. I just don't agree. I mean Nick, can I add on to you for one point? Sorry. Yeah. Um so you know his devour skill on enemies? I think literally everyone is using it wrong currently. I think if you're using it on a squishy, then that squishy should be dead either way, and then you're just wasting time for your team. I think that you have to devour tanks. I literally think that's the only time that devour on enemies is useful. Like someone who's up in your front line's face, 
just so you can disable them for like three or four seconds and walk them out of the team. Oh, yeah. Right? Then you're also doing like 30% of their, their maximum health and damage. Like it's a big deal. But I'm saying like everyone uses it on like like the either the mid lane or the AD carry. Yeah, Whereas if, kills. if if the support gets in range of the mid laner or AD carry, that mid laner or AD carry should be dead either way. Instead of like just eating them for three seconds and delaying their death and waiting for the enemy team to engage, I think like you should be eating tanks. Like if you can eat a tank, walk them out of the fight for three seconds, then that's crazy. That is a crazy skill. But I I think that everyone's doing it wrong, and I think that Devour is mainly just good for using it on your teammates. I could probably agree with that. Yeah. I just don't think he's very good. Maybe I haven't seen a good one be played yet, but What about his shield though, Nick? His shield is fucking crazy. It's it he's so hard to judge when you're actually gonna get the kill and mm -hmm. when he's just gonna shield and oh wait, he has a hundred percent of his health back again. Right. Right. It's and very it's hard style. to determine that, yeah. Cool. Anything else about Tom Kench? His skin's mm -hmm. fucking awesome. Yeah, it, it is a like, cool skin, yeah. This hey, joke oh. is really funny. Hey, Chris, what were you doing right before we recorded this? Oh, okay. Well, my piece of news for the week, since there's nothing really league-related to pick up on, and this is just cool, I was going to talk about it anyway. Um, but right before this show, uh, I was uh, a guest on other important League of Legends podcast, Trinity Force. Those exist? They do! They do! Um, some have come and gone, uh, and some are, some are some were good, some were not so good. And let me tell you about a good one, uh, Trinity Force. Um, yeah, Adam, who uh, owns the Trinity Force Network and all that jazz over there, he invited me onto their show, and I said, hell yeah, that sounds like a good time. Um, so I was on there today, and we did some mailbag stuff for some of their listeners, answering a lot of their questions and stuff like that, and I had a really, really, really great time. They did an excellent job of uh, welcoming somebody that isn't from their show and isn't really familiar with um, their sort of style and anything, making me feel welcome. So thanks to those guys. Um, if you want to go listen to this particular episode, I believe it's going to be episode 277. 277. Right. And that's what I was talking about. That's what I was referencing to, uh, you think we do a lot of shows. They do two shows of their main show a week. They're about an hour long each. Um, they're pretty cool guys. And, um, I have no clue how they find the time to do something like that. <laughs> uh, it, I, I believe for, for a couple of them, it's a very high priority. And for Adam, I believe it's actually his full-time gig is managing this stuff. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. They've got a couple of other cool shows on, in their network, um, that, uh, are LCS Rundown. It's much akin to our LCS Breakdown. The Oslo Podcast, which is an Australian League of Legends based podcast. The Four Wards. Uh, podcast which is um it's a newbie league of legends podcasts for that and then they have this they have this um na lcs interview series called sheen prox that they put mostly primarily on their youtube um so, so yeah it was it was a really good time shout out to those guys they're they're great um i would go listen to their show when when you don't have any of ours to listen to i suppose or even if you do why not balance it out there's plenty of audio stuff to listen to it's a good time. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Shout out to those peeps. How about you, Frost? What you, what you got? What you got? Oh, um, because there was like no news, and I didn't really feel like talking about rumors in the NALCS and like EU LCS because I feel like that's they're just rumors. So I mean, who really cares until they actually come to yeah, fruition? It's a lot of hot air right now. Yeah, like I'm sure in like the next couple weeks they'll probably talk about that stuff. But um, I wanted to talk about like my whole mentality on ranked. Maybe I'm talking about this because I want to like justify why i'm playing so many ranked teams so i don't feel bad about like what i'm doing with my life but um yeah so i've played like 25 ranked games in the past week i've gotten kind of angry at two of them but i mean not really i've had fun and pretty bull every single one of them and because that's the, my mentality that i take in ranked my mentality that i take in ranked is that i don't care if i win or lose the game as long as i fall. if i play my weight lane properly if i think i win the matchup if i do everything in my personal checklist, I am happy with how I played the game. Win or lose, if I continue to play to the level that I want to play, I will eventually improve and therefore uh, gain a low, go up tiers, whatever. Okay. So I kind of like each each and every game, I'm like, okay, this is, this is um, I'm playing Gnar into this. I want to poke early. I want to make sure I don't die to their assassin jungler i make like a, almost a mental checklist of stuff that i should accomplish throughout the landing phase mid game and then into late game like oh i want to look for these tele yanks bottom because we have a 
really farm heavy jungler, so he's going to take an early dragon. So I want to look for um, a time where I can tell you with good rage and then get a good alt off. So it's like I make myself a mental checklist. I think it would work if I made myself a physical checklist. That would be actually a smart thing that I might try. Um, and then I try to cross these thing things off throughout the game. Like, didn't overextend during laning phase. Warded at the five minute mark when their jungler should be coming around top lane. And I honestly think that I'm seeing improvement. Like, I I'm winning more games, I think. I'm playing better in my opinion than i used to and although i'm playing a lot of new champions like that's something that kind of um i people have criticized me on like i play champions that i don't know fully i guess i know the role of i know what role they fill i know their abilities obviously but i don't play them a lot but like i find when i take this tactic of i know my champion's limits i know what i have to accomplish for our team to have the best chance of winning the winning the game I find that is a great way to improve in League of Legends if you really want to gain something from ranked. It's, it's amazing, though. It's like, I some people just play the game, they just lane, they just do whatever. But it's like, you if you can figure out the pros and cons of your champion and where your champion excels opposed to the enemy team, I honestly think that anyone can gain, like, ELO just by, like, outlining these simple little things. And I honestly... uh. I think that you guys should try it this week or something. Like, if you can play a ranked game or two and just think during the loading, loading phase, oh, the enemy top laner has Ignite and I have Tally, so I should play back through for these early levels because then eventually I have the advantage over him with Teleport. So it's just it's just really cool. It's amazing how much mental game you can put into this game before the game even starts. And I, I wish we had, like, a um, pro to go through this stuff, because I'm sure that they do something similar. They, they know the ins and outs of each and every lane matchup, and they kind of do the exact same thing. And I think that if everyone tries this, I think that you can easily see results. And, yeah, so that's kind of been my uh, whole ranked mentality, and uh, I think I've seen improvements from it. Okay. Neat. What Fucking sort of... Chris? I, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I don't... I, I'm really just super disconnected. Chris, instead of just picking Ezreal every game and, game and losing lane... <laughs> um. You want to you want to pick champion like you're you're playing Ezreal into Graves, so you okay. know he's a burst AD carry. You know your ranged AD carry that scales better, so you yes. know that you have to play laning phase back. If you're down CS, who really cares? All that it, all that you know that all that in that lane that matters is the fact that you don't let him get kills in lane because he is a burst all in AD carry. Right. It's just like little things like that. It's like if you can go into the game game thinking that rather than oh I'm just playing AD carry, I think you have a, an innate advantage over your lane opponent. I would or, agree. Yeah. I mean, that's how I play. I feel like that's how most people that have played this game for a long time play. I wouldn't say that necessarily. I, honest, I honestly only started doing it this past week, where I actually, like, completely analyze my lane matchup throughout loading screen. Uh -huh. And then just, it honestly helps. I, I think if you go through every little step of, like, uh, a little agenda for you throughout the game, mm -hmm. I think that you win way more games. There's one problem with this. Yeah. Um, is that you can over invest in your effort um, in one area and completely miss opportunities and where you could shine otherwise. If the person is bad you, and, and you respect them and their space because you think that they're good, sometimes you miss opportunities to get ahead of them quicker. I I, I would rather um, overestimate, overestimate someone than underestimate someone. So I think that my, my I mean, strategy is completely fine. Because if you, you under are, you're right. I'm not saying that I've this... lost lane to bronze three kids in top lane because I've like tried to tower dive them and stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, like then you lose the game. They literally have an advantage, then you lose the game. So I mean, I think that playing as if they are on your level or above your level is brilliant. No, it is. It's very useful. I'm just saying. There's. I mean, it's not bulletproof. But no strategy in solo queue is per se. No, it's just a way to improve your skill. And I think yeah. um, the over underestimation is a really good point that, you know, we don't. I, I'm not sure if we've talked about this, but a lot of times I see people looking, you know, going on to like Law Nexus or Locking or OP.GG before the game even starts and kind of looking at, you know, hey, my opponent is Diamond 3. Well, this game's over because I'm only silver. Uh, or, hey, my opponent's bronze, this game's over because he's bronze. Uh, like, going into the game with the mindset that you go into the game with is not good for, you know, the outcome of the game. Uh, right. I, I, I can't remember the last time I looked someone up before the game started. Yeah, don't, don't.
Yeah, we that. went on a... There was a big kick for a while, I think last year. I think about a year ago, yeah. About looking people up on, like, Lol King. It right was a before. little bit longer ago, honestly. Um, Remember when we were, we were doing that ranked team stuff, we would look them up all the time, but it's just... It's a bad idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. you just... Don't psych you yourself just, out. Yeah, you get into this mindset, either, you know, good or bad... Where you either overestimate them and you underestimate your own abilities or overestimate your own abilities and then end up, you know, being behind because you thought you could tower dive when, you know, you don't, you couldn't. Right. I, I, I actually have a great example. I might still have the picture on my computer. If I do, I'll give it to Chris. Um, it's a picture from, like, last season. It's um, my last um, two picks. They're playing, they're a duo Q support AD carry thing. And the enemy team locks in... Um, Quinn and Nami or something support, like AD carry support. And our AD carry and support are instantly like, holy shit, this is the easiest lane, oh my god, free low, or something like that. So I, I screenshot it, I'm like, um, okay guys, I I'll believe it when I see it, right? And then my next screenshot is <laughs> the, the like um, stat screen, and our bot lane is 0 8 or something like that, and the uh, Quinn is 7 and 1 or something, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just funny. It's like, I, I can see that coming from a mile away, just from, like, completely over, I mean, underestimating your opponents, and it's just funny. Cool. Yeah, so analyze your matches, and you'll do better. <laughs> just hire Monte Cristo to analyze every single League of Legends game you play, and you'll be exactly. better. I'm sure, that would, I'm sure that would increase your chances of winning, be, let's be honest, right? It probably yeah. would, don't. Probably what, would. Is, what are some, um, some ways that people can view their game replays, since we can't do that in-game? Do you guys know of any Ooh. good ways? If, um, if you're diamond, you can use op.gg because it auto records every diamond game. <laughs> okay, so if you're not perfect, diamond, just get diamond and then easy. You'll be good if you get to diamond. <laughs> um, I think uh, lol summoner. Yes, insights. In insight. I yeah. I think, LSI. Yes. I, I think that has a way to record it. It does. It records what, all the Be careful games. with what you're using for this stuff. For oh, the sole reason info. that like these add-ons are really good at fucking your shit up when you patch. Like, if you start um, having issues launching the game or something like that, you might just need to disable it for a little while while they try and fix out some bugs. Because you know it's it happens sometimes. It's yeah, really yeah. Really annoying when it does. That happens a lot in WoW, where every time a new patch comes out, you have to disable every single add-on until they get updated. Um, so after the patch, you may have to you know disable it for three or four days. But usually, they're pretty good about getting it updated, you know, nice and quick. I, I found the one that I've seen recommended a lot on Reddit. It's called replay.gg. It's an add-on to your client, and after each game, it emails you the replay file. So, I okay. mean, it's a, oh, it's a really cool. convenient way of doing it. Cool. What about you, Nick? Hey, so I was playing a League of Legends game earlier. That, yeah, there's, um, again, there's, there's not too much news, so I was just, you know, this is going to be a casual League cast. Um, I was playing a League of Legends game earlier, and I was I was playing as Vayne in the bot lane, and uh, it pretty much came down to if my ultimate was up and I didn't get stunned by the Ash Arrow, we would win. But I had no easy way to tell, you know, my lane partner that my ultimate was up, uh, unfortunately, because there is a way to do that in Dota where you just hold the Alt key and then click on an ability and it'll let your team know that, hey, like, this ability will be up in 10 seconds or, you know, it's on cooldown, something like that. And that, that got me thinking, like, why is that not an option in League of Legends? That seems like something really easy to implement. Uh, and, and, you know, it kind of made me think about some other things that League of Legends doesn't have that a lot of uh, other games do. It's so, so I wanted to, to know what you guys thought. What what would you like to see added to League of Legends that is in another game that League of Legends doesn't have? So mine was, uh, you know, timers from Dota where you can just alt-click an ability and it tells your team, you know, my ultimate's up, my Q's up, something like that. Uh, I can think of many of these. I think, Let's hear them. I think uh, structure damage from Heroes of the Storm with spells and abilities is a really cool thing. Uh, and there's a couple of champions that can do that in League of Legends um, with some of their, like, uh, on-hit stuff that does extra damage to towers. But, like, I'm talking, like, AoE stuff, like a bunch of really cool things. You fucking Lux ult a tower and it just explodes. <laughs> But I mean, I mean, it would be it would be scaled and balanced, of course, like to the resistances of the tower and things like that. Yeah, like it already is auto attacks. But I just think it's really cool. Like if I put if I hit Heimerdinger's turrets out range. Uh, I'm sure there'd be some limitations, but <laughs> like uh, like Annie's Annie's cone of fire, like that shit would be cool. 
Yeah, I think League of Legends does a really good job of uh, balancing that around ability power. Uh, you know, if you have high ability power, your auto attacks to turrets are going to scale to do higher damage. Um, so I think they kind of compensate for that in the first place. But yeah, that, that would be really cool. I, I picture uh, the new Gangplank rework stacking up, you know, 10 powder kegs and then just blowing up a turret. That would be pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. What else? A safe-to-leave system. That would be fucking great. A method of ending the game without like uh what what's 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 the way to say this um without being punished for hold on a way to end the game if you have a disconnect from the start with zero punishment zero LP lost zero game losses um it should auto end the game if you never get everybody to connect it, that that is such a simple feature I just. I'm fucking flabbergasted that that has not come out in the past five years. God damn. A method of reporting trolls in the lobby without having to take a screenshot and sending in a support ticket. Or at the end of game lobby. A method of... Whoa, I don't... Uh, I almost want a way to kick people from a lobby, but I, I, I honestly find myself I don't think agreeing that can... with what I've heard about this one. I think it'll be abused, yeah. Shit. Yeah, someone wants to play something stupid and, like... I'm a Heimerdinger main. No, don't. You're you're not playing in my game. <laughs> you're not a Heimerdinger main in this lobby. <laughs> oh god, I'm trying to think. Cause I know there's a bunch of these. Um, I have a good one. Go ahead. Let's, yeah. A real custom game mode. A mode that you can go in, set your CDR sandbox. to 100. Yeah, complete sandbox mode. You can set your CDR on everything to 100. percent You can practice flashes. You can practice all your abilities. You can practice combos. I think that would be a great improvement, not only for the competitive scene. But, like, just for practice yourself. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. there was an interview with the coach of Team Liquid a couple of days ago, and he said, like, if you could start, start a scrim with certain, like, um, uh, st- stats for each team, like, oh, you're down 5k gold, and th- we're starting the game from here. That would be a huge improvement to, like, competitive practice. Like, being yeah. able to actually try and start games from a certain point. Or being able to, like, rewind a game. Like, I know, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I've heard this when there was the bug in the Fnatic game that there is a rewind type feature that they can use for um, uh, Dota 2 Professional. It, like, just reverts the game back to a previous point. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, the, the game, like, will take a screenshot every, I don't know, like, five or ten minutes, and then they just go back to the previous screenshot, kind of like a, how a computer goes back to a previous backup right, if something yeah. bad happens. Like, it just does that to the game. Like, imagine that for scrim practice for a team. Oh, we we completely butchered our um, engage on this fight. Hey, um, no one's gonna really learn from this because you guys are gonna get Baron and win the game. Can we redo this fight? Like, imagine that. Like, that would I don't know. I think that would be huge. I yeah, so just like scenario, like just building scenarios that you can practice those sort of things. Imagine but, trying it, that same yeah. team fight five times over in the exact same scenario. Like, that would be so important for a team. It's- Especially because competitive scrims usually end before 20 minutes anyway. If something if something bad happens in the first 20 minutes, uh, a, a team will just leave the game. Like, they have to remake the entire game if something goes yeah. wrong, instead of just, you know, rewinding it or going back to, I don't, I don't know, the, the scenario that, that played out. Yeah, I, don't, I don't see any downside. A, there is a ton of stuff that they could come out with that they just flat out haven't. <sighs> It makes me so jealous. <laughs> I mean, like, have you have you guys actually seen the post that Light popped up earlier today on Ask FM relating to this? No, but I think you should talk about it. Okay, so he uh, asked uh, uh, Ask FM is basically a, a platform to post long form answers to questions that just pretty much anyone can ask. And Light posted this uh, up on here. Well. This is a very long response. I'm just going to get the gist into here. So the question, why does Riot take so much time to implement stuff? Take Team Builder Ranked as example. What's so hard? What are you guys adjusting designing at the moment? Everything takes so long. Client, replay, new tribunal. You fix bugs and patches only, even though EUW has three to four hour maintenance yesterday. 
And then basically Light starts to go into a response where he starts comparing Riot to places like Google, Facebook, and Amazon here. I started visiting studios, when it, uh, whether it was some at EA, uh, Ubisoft, uh, Blizzard, Valve, and Riot, and companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon. We can all agree that these are respectable companies. And guess what? All of them have their pros and cons, and you can't even imagine the challenges that face these companies every day. How long do you think it took Google to develop Gmail? How many projects lasted years at these companies and had to be cancelled before you ever heard of them? How long did it take Facebook to redesign their thumbs up icon? Developers do what they do because they are passionate about building stuff. They put all of their heart, sweat, and tears into these games and products. There are nightmares in the game industries about crunch where teams work excessive hours every single week just to get the game out the door a few months early. And guess what? Those developers burn out and quit and never make another game. How many amazing games will never be made because of the non-stop harassment and stress that gamers put on them? Developers are never going to be fast enough in some eyes because outside person doesn't know how difficult it is to build the industry-changing, high-quality software that can scale to the global masses. Well, I feel that this comparison that Light has gone ahead and put up here is a complete and utter load of horse shit. Because while it takes Google several years to make something like Gmail, they actually released something else big in the interim. Like a Gmail beta. Yeah! Or, you know, like updating their search engine. Or having hundreds of products that are already changing the way society functions at its core level. I mean, it's... This is, this is really, really, really what I don't understand. Places like Google, Facebook, and Amazon are constantly releasing new features, new things. You get huge updates to everything that happens behind the scenes, on uh, the front end, uh, every fucking couple months something in the Amazon UI changes and it just looks better and better as it goes along. And then Riot sits here and has five friggin' years, five years, guys, to put together something or A anything. replay system. Yes, that can handle some of the most basic functionality that we see in other games. And they just can't do it. And I don't understand why. I really, really don't. Because companies like Valve, they put like a quarter of the resources into it and get it out. They, they don't even like, you know, bitch or complain about it. It just, oh, hey, look, here's a replay system. Oh, hey, look, here's a complete relaunch of the client and all of the features you could possibly imagine in one go. Oh, neat. And they have like, what, 30 developers on the, uh, on the freaking Dota 2? And that's on top of having the developers for Steam, on top of having the developers for TF2, on top of having the developers for whatever the fuck else Valve is doing nowadays. They, they've got multiple products, and they are blowing you out of the water with a fraction of the resources. I just don't understand what you're doing. I'm fairly positive Heroes of the Storm had a replay system built into the client on, on Alpha, the Alpha build. Yes. And this I is something where you case, yes. you click on your match history, and then there's an option to just watch the game. And I mean, yes, it it takes a very long time to it takes a long time to implement this. But we've been waiting for five years, almost six years now. They announced the replay system three three years and three months ago. But this is something that should have been implemented probably two years and three months ago. Yeah, I. I don't get it. Like, here, here's another chunk of this. When you watch a brilliant mathematician solve a proof over a course of a couple of years, what well, you don't say, what's so hard about that? It's just math. It's because we have an inherent belief that some math is extremely complicated. If we don't understand it, it must be difficult. When we look at software development, we're naive and ignorant. We somehow believe that it's just making a feature and it should be fast. Okay, no, that, that, that's not... It's not a good comparison. When you're trying to solve a proof from scratch as a mathematician, you're trying to do something that's never been done before. Here, you have multitudes of examples across thousands of different games. Different companies, different ideas, different people. I mean, it's there's people out there that have done almost exactly what you're trying to do on a different game at a different time before, and there's no excuse to not be able to implement it in your own. I, I don't... I'm... Bleh. I'm so frustrated about some of this stuff. And it's That's just... okay. I mean, I think you, I think you're taking it a little bit more personal than anybody else's because it's in the field that you work in. Because I look look at that and go, oh, all right, well, all right. You know, it's just, I mean, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, like, I, it's not my realm of thought, so I won't touch it. But if he was going to talk about like like development philosophies and like what they do, and I would probably take issue with a couple of other things. But this is not my world, man. It's not most of our world. So at the end of the day, I love the game, and I'm going to continue playing it. Like no matter what mm. they do, like yeah. I found the replay system announcement. By the way, 
um, it was on IPL's channel. Remember IPL with Nick Allen East story at yeah. IPL? Um, so <laughs> the, the the new stories that are on this update. So this is um February fifteenth, twenty thirteen. So it was two years ago, two and a half years ago. But um, uh, so you have the replay system and the uh, Quinn spotlight. <laughs> oh, God. I just think wow. it's pretty funny. Wow. They're like, yeah. the replay system is finally here. Yay! Confetti falls from the sky, and then, oh, <laughs> two and a half years later. Yeah. <sighs> I, oh, well. I'm happy. Magma Chamber. That was, I, I wish that came out. I'm, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on. Uh, to Brim. Spotlight this week is Brom. Yeah, it's Brim. 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 You guys know the story of Brom at all? Past what you saw the um uh, in the uh, little spotlight trailer that came out when he was does he run defending that Poro? Poros in his free time. That's uh, all he does in the in the lore Dark that they put up. Past. It's like it's like a play, as in like just a dialogue between two people, and it's a grandmother telling um a a little baby troll um about Brom, uh, and it's apparently this story where this little kid she's like a little little troll boy about your age, and he's like he. And uh, and she, this little troll boy, was going up into the mountains and went and he found a little door that looked cool and had a piece of shoe ice in the middle and there was a bunch of treasures inside and he walked in and then it was closed and he was yelling for help and then a shepherd came by and he was also yelling for help and then Brom heard them who apparently is a legend to these troll people um came came along. Like, tried to move the door and couldn't do it, and then the little boy interjects and goes, but he's the strongest man ever, blah, blah, blah. And the grandmother's like, oh, you stupid little shit, you're not wrong. Um, and don't interrupt me again, I swear to God. Um, and then continues on with the story where he was leaning up against a boulder for four days and four nights, perplexed by the issue. After all, quote, the, a young troll's life was at stake. And then he had the great idea. He's like, well, if I can't go... Uh, you know, around the mountain via this door, I will go through the mountain, climbed the mountain, and then punched his way straight through the middle of the mountain down to the uh, down to the chamber that they was in. But then once he got in there, wow, structural integrity of this mountain collapsed, and they rushed to the door to hide underneath it. And the rest of the mountain crumbled around them as they hid underneath this door. But apparently the door was magical and stuff and doesn't break, so it uh it like let them survive underneath it, I guess. And now he carries it around, and he's a big old legend. He's he's Brom. I hate oh, like, to say it, Chris, but uh, that's some Nick's lore type shit from like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, no, if, if Nick came on the show and said that, I would like I would have been like, ah, that's a good story that he made up. Like, no, exactly. No, uh, it is. This is a ridiculous, ridiculous story. I like I like what they showed uh, in his trailer a lot better. I think that was really wicked cool. Um, but yeah, uh, the exact quotes are like. Uh, Brom's tunnel had weakened the mountaintop, and now it was caving in. Thinking quickly, Brom grabbed the enchanted door and held it above him like a shield, protecting them as the mountaintop collapsed all around them. When it was over, Brom was amazed. There wasn't a single scratch on the door. Brom knew it was something very special. And then the boy says, and from that moment on, that magical shield never left Brom's side. Yep. What 8th grader won an award for that story? <laughs> I don't know, but it's it's kind of cute. It's heartwarming. It, it's, uh, it's, it's nice, yeah. I, I think it, it fits his character still. I mean, yeah. let's it, be honest. Yeah. If you're thinking about the theme of the character, it does fit. Yeah, he, he has quotes like, the heart is the strongest muscle. Good times, good friends, what could be better? Ah, uh, new beginnings. What what else is incredibly like? Hang on a sec. Um, if they Issues insist on a fight, that, that one's funny as fuck. Sometimes Icy Heart just needs warm smile. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Make a smile. Taunting an enemy Alistar, you remind me of Agatha, best cow back home. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Taunting an enemy Annie, mother gave me bear as child too, Annie. <laughs> 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 that's great all right cool uh yeah that's that's his lore um but enough about who this guy is let's talk about what sort of abilities he's got uh nick would you like to talk about that oh yeah sure cool <laughs> sorry didn't realize uh it would be all right so his yeah. passive who's looking at your name and team speak <laughs> wait chris's name uh, no, he was he was looking at you through TeamSpeak and I was you to I pick was it up. staring at oh. your name. I was like Nick. No. Okay. Well, my name isn't me. Oh okay. shit, he's right. No, he right. <laughs> All right. So Brum is uh, his passive is called Concussive Blows, 
uh, it's a it's a stack system. He adds a stack when he auto attacks them or when he uses his Q, Winter's Bite. He and his allies continue to add stacks with basic attacks. At four stacks, their target will be stunned. Uh, so it's a four stack ability instead of a three stack, which is every other one in the game. <laughs> Innovation. Innovate. No, but it's... Th- th- can we be can we be honest though? Three stack and four like three th- stack abilities like that, like passes and stuff, is probably the best way to balance the champion. Because yeah. you can make it overpowered when it procs, but like a trash passive when it's not proc. Do you know what I mean? And that's completely fair because you have to work as a team to proc it, which I think is great. Or like you have to stay on someone to proc it. I think that's a really good way to balance a like a uh, an ability. People complain about it all the time, but I think it's great. Yeah, a lot of people complain that oh, it's another you know ability a champion with a three proc ability, but that that's completely fine. That's healthy for the game. There's counterplay involved. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I think Browning is a really good example of a champion that whose kit is synergistic, really well done, uh, but you know has obvious counterplay uh, in his kit. Uh, and one of those things that has counterplay is his Q, Winner's Bite. He propels freezing ice from his shield, slowing and dealing magic damage. It applies a stack of concussive blows. His W is called Stand Behind Me. Uh, Brom leaps to a single target allied minion or champion. On arrival, Brahm and the ally gain armor and magic resistance for a few seconds. His E is called Unbreakable, uh, and he was after Yasuo, right? Or before Yasuo? Uh, after. He was after. He was the after. next champion after, right? Okay, so we had seen this already, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, his E is called Unbreakable. He Brahm raises a shield in a direction for several seconds, and intercepting all projectiles, causing them to hit him and be destroyed. He negates the damage of the first attack completely and reduces the damage of all subsequent attacks from this direction. Uh, and this can block, um, you know, abilities that are AOE in a circle. Um, the one they have for the uh, the ability spotlight uh, on the, on Brahm's kit is for Zyra's Q. You can block 100% of the damage if you stand with the shield towards the center of it, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then his ultimate, Glacial Fissure. fissure. Brahm slams the ground, knocking up enemies nearby and in a line in front of him. A fissure is left along the line that slows enemies. So it's a knock up and then a, a slow past a, past a certain point. Can I mention something about his E that I may or may not be true and I might just be saying random stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's true? I'm sure we'll find out. Um, so we're talking about Yasuo versus him, like Windwall versus Brahm huge shield move. Um, so I'm pretty sure champion like abilities like syndra's uh orb thing or push move i'm pretty sure when they go into yasuo's wind wall they get destroyed when whereas when they hit brom's shield they stop in front of it i'm pretty sure there's another ability like that too like i don't play uh, syndra but i know that i've seen that before where it's like you throw something at brom and it just stops dead in front of the shield yes that's the way it um it used to be but actually in one of the patch notes i think it's the most recent patch they uh, they changed the way Syndra's orbs worked, uh, their interaction with Windwall. So now they'll just stop at the Windwall. Okay, that's good because I, I thought it, I thought it was interesting that they seem like very similar abilities, yet like they interacted differently. Okay, I'm glad yeah. that's been cleared up because it, it was kind of weird that one did one thing and one did the other. That's yeah, like, yeah, okay. that's how it used to work. But they they changed the code to kind of give Syndra a little bit of love. That's good. Yeah. Neat. So I know this is a bad time to talk about it, but we said code. But um, uh, there's this thing on Reddit today before we go into his super cool role in the team. Um, t- speaking about spaghetti code, um, did you see the Riven thing today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, Henderson, you're gonna love this. We sometimes joke about like the the code that interacts with certain things in like Riot. Like for example, Trinimir spinning through uh your uh the enemy Xerath Q and getting CS or something because the mm-hmm. Q is coded as CS. I mean as minions. But today, Chris. There was a thing where if you um, WE'd, uh, EW'd as Riven, and hit your recall as you attacked a minion, right? Those four things, right? You have to you have to hit a minion while doing your EW, okay. while hitting uh, your recall, okay, and it instantly recalls you back to base without the channel. What? <laughs> yes, we found the we found the Riven God who animation canceled his recall. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like- He's just. He's auto attacking the inhibitor uh, on the enemy team. Okay. He auto attacks a minion and then immediately is teleported back to base. That's incredible. <laughs> so as much as I'd like to give Riot shit, that one's actually pretty fucking hard to catch. 
Yeah, it's like, yeah I you mean, can't possibly catch all of those every time you patch something. And that's just one of the ones where it's just like, how the fuck did you people find that? <laughs> I was I mean, pissing Riven myself is, laughing. Riven has been out for, what, four or five years now? And this is the very first time I, I can assume that it's ever happened to someone. Yeah, I mean, can't blame Riot enough for finding it, but it's really, it's hilarious. I just had to bring that up because, like, I was just pissing myself laughing at work when I heard that. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> animation canceled its recall. It looks like they've already fixed it. Um, she's not disabled anymore. She was a, a little bit earlier. Okay, so. that's good. That's yeah, probably yeah a I'm pretty sure there. they could, like, they're like, oh, that? Okay, well, we know specifically what that issue is now, but who knew that you could do that? Yeah, that's yeah. Just, I thought it was hilarious. Um, but anyways, I bet, I want, rolling to you. I want to imagine, I'm sorry, I want to imagine somebody on their team like heard about it and just like started dying just laughing his ass off and they're just like okay okay fine 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 goes in the back room and comes back five minutes later like it's fixed it's fixed but I, <laughs> I feel bad about it i think i think we should have kept that in that's funny as fuck <laughs> see you know there's that there's that one guy who's been abusing this since season one release ribbon who's just like fuck what am i gonna <laughs> there's do a back that? button <laughs> this challenger player who's been abusing this to get ahead every single game and now he's just like Going back to silver, boys. <laughs> Looks like I gotta learn how to play this game. Might as well play Aurelia. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's talk about um. Now that we know how Brom works and uh, and how Riven's been broken since forever, let's talk about Brom's role in uh <laughs> in in a team. Where do you, where so, do you guys see him very often? Support. Support. Anywhere else other than support? I've seen a couple of troll builds play him attack speed in the jungle. It's not good, but it's funny to watch. Yeah, it's not something that I would pick outside of. Uh, blind pick with some friends, but it's support is his intended role, and that's yeah. where he really excels. Yeah, Nick and I kind of talked about this on the um, LCS show this week. Um, so Brom isn't a um, I would I wouldn't call him a like top tier support. Like he's not picked every single game, sort of thing. But he's a very niche pick, which I think a lot of us like. Um, for example, one of the best champions currently in the mid lane that isn't Azir or Victor or Ezreal um, is uh, Jace. Jace got a ton of buffs, and he is a really good poke champion, and the poke meta is kind of back. So, Unicorns of Love, the EU uh, the fifth place team right now, they've been picking up Braum support whenever Jace gets picked, because if you can stop a Jace Q from half healthing one of your carries, by just simply Braum shielding it and taking zero damage, you completely counter that huge aspect of the poke game of uh, Jace. And I, I honestly think having a niche role, like a, a niche spot for Braum, like on a team comp like that in a poke meta, is absolutely brilliant. So, I mean, he's a complete counter to like Ezreal or like um, Jace or any like crazy hard poke uh, champions. That's interesting. Uh, his E uh, Unbreakable is uh, really what kind of defines Braum, I would say. Uh, as this big, huge, tanky, I'm gonna block everything that's in front of me for a couple seconds. Uh, and it's really cool, his his shield, while it completely negates everything about the first attack, it also destroys every projectile that hits it. So even if you get hit by uh, an Ezreal ult, or a Jace Q, or, you know, a Nilly Spear, something like that, it just, like, it, all those projectiles are just gone. Like, they're not gonna hit your team. It's literally a moving Yasuo wall. Yeah. He does it's, take some damage for it, but still. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's reduced like by 10% reduced damage, I yeah. think, or something stupid like that, yeah. I mean, the, the entire, like, kit, like, his, the champion is just really good at getting up in people's faces and just, you know, like, doing the boogie. I feel like he's a, he's one of the best examples of a very, I think he was one of the best design champions that Riot has ever released. Can we, can we have a definition of doing the boogie? <laughs> yeah, I'd appreciate that. So once you once you stun the and then yeah. just sits there and laughs. <laughs> you stun the champion and then drops right. the boogie. Put that in the <laughs> dictionary. You see, in in my head, it's just like you know, Brom runs up to the enemy team and just goes like <laughs> for like ten minutes, and then they lose. I would define that as doing the boogie, yes, yep. as an uninitiated, I suppose. All right, great talk. Good, <laughs> neat. All right, what about uh, his his uh, build order, like like where his skill. Like what do you guys what do you guys max first on Mr. Braum? Max Q. Max Q, Q. is awesome. I would agree yeah. maxing Q is pretty much the only correct choice. Yeah, take your ultimate when you can, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, uh, any, I, I don't really feel like there's any other way. I to think you it. max E second. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, do you max E or W? Both of them are pretty good though. Um E. Does does I do. uh, maxing his shield reduce the cooldown? Yes. Yeah, I max so. that one, honestly, over the, the jump. 
I just like the jump because it, half. it lets you get places quicker. And, and in bottom lane specifically, that added mobility to him makes it, it makes a huge difference. Because there'll be lots of. I mean, sorry. I, no, I, like, I feel like you don't really need to have a lot of really low cooldown on the shield if you're using it intelligently. Like that's not as big of a deal as having a lower cooldown on like the mobility move that you have. That's just okay. me though. It looks like pro is max E, and I think E is probably the smarter thing to max. I like I like stand behind me. It's a really good ability, but the reason I think it's better to max late is because um it, it's um passive bonus armor and bonus MR is like percentage. So I mean yeah, it scales with your bonus armor and MR, which you know if you uh, from nine to thirteen, you're not going to have that much. Uh, but approaching towards the late game, it's going to be way more beneficial to point those points there than. You know, to save them. Yeah, so I think I think maxing, uh, getting that E cooldown down and the reduction up, I think, is really important for the early game. Yeah. Um, build? Face of the Mountain, and then... Six of them. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong. Uh, Who's mobility? Or swiftness? What? I like Mark Treads. Swiftness. I like Mark Treads. Okay. I, mean, I would I mean, go I mobility still. I always get mobility, yeah. Mobility's best boot. I like the only for range champions. The only person I get swiftness on is Gasuo. Why do you get swiftness ever? Um, I don't know. There's some champions that it works really well on. One also being, um, eh, you can make an argument for either set of boots on Hecarim. The the only the only time I ever built swiftness is on Pantheon. Yeah. Uh, that's literally the only champion I built it on, and I think it's because like he literally is an early game champion and he has low movement speed, and he just. Shits down people's that's how I, if that's you how get I feel range. about Yas. Absolutely. Okay, whatever you say, Chris. So back to Brom. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Frozen Mountain, Frozen Heart's really good. Frozen Mountain. Uh, Anything, Sight any, Zone, obviously. Any freezy items? Yeah, any any freezy item items. Get Frozen Mallet. Probably our champion. So no, don't get those items. Iceborne uh, Gauntlets. Iceborne is not terrible on him. Is, is Scrying Orb consider icy, or is it just blue? It's just blue. <laughs> it's blue. Okay, I still pick up Scrying Orb. That's that's a good <laughs> item, right? Might as well just pick up Last Whisper too. <laughs> blue also blue Brom. That was Impaler. <laughs> That's a red item. You know, it, it's if not it pretty the well, game. You build a ton of health on him. Honestly, you build a ton of health, ton of armor, ton of magic resist, and you'll probably win the game because right. he's really, really strong. But yeah, like his Winter's Bite scales the max health. So I mean, the more health you have, the more your Q does, and it, yeah, do the deeps. Um, strengths and weaknesses. He's Anything in particular? Really... Really, really strong against uh, pokey ranged champions. Yes, he's really strong against any sort of like ranged initiation. Like, exactly, like an um, Asher or something like that. Yeah, he, if if you use him well, it, he he you, follows the same rule set as Gasuo Wall, pretty much <laughs> for deterring or engaging or providing cover fire for when you're like sieging a turret. Yada yada yada. I think yeah, so Wall's better in general than his wall because like he still takes CC if effects, I guess. But um, yeah. But I mean, it's still like it, pick him against like Jace or something. That's crazy. If you can block yes. the Jace Q, then block the Jace Q, engage, and then you win the team fight. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, and then for weaknesses, I, I I would only say that his his weakness is high mobility champions that he like can't manage to like get to or lock down. See, I think his strength is his weakness. I think ranged pokey champions beat Brom too. Uh, I think it all depends on if they can play around the Unbreakable or not. Or if you can play around them playing around you. <laughs> it, it, exactly. Yeah. Playing Braum is like a, a huge mind game. It's you know, it's it's like playing Blitzcrank. If your pulls on cooldown, you're pretty much a bad champion. Right. And it's like, you know, if you play against, you know, a ranged pokey bot lane, uh, Sustain, who can just outheal all your poke, uh, that you have to go all in on, but can't because, you know, they're ranged and pokey. Uh, I think that's how you lose, and also how you win, if that makes any sense. Yes? Yes. Whoever plays it better, yeah. Two different things can be the same, Nick Cooper. Yeah. Life like lessons. Jedi and the Sith. You're, you're not wrong. wrong. You're no, not that's wrong. That's Star Wars deep. I don't know, man. Only a Sith deals in absolutes, except that that was an absolute itself, so what's you gonna do about it? Alright, cool. That was um, right. Any other final thoughts on Mr. Brom before we shut the shield door on this topic? <laughs> Best skin. Brom's a cool champion. Uh, LT Gray? You're wrong. I would agree that LT Gray is the best skin. It's Dragon Slayer. Steel chair. It's He's awesome. Dragon Slayer's the best skin. Every single Dragon Slayer no. skin is the best skin in the no. goddamn no. game. I'm sorry, are you like six or something? 
<laughs> yeah, dude. Dragon uh, yeah, cool. Wait, wait, wait. Dragon Slayer are all the best skins. Let's go ahead and look at Dragon Slayer Jarvan real quick. Okay, that one doesn't let's go ahead and take a, That's let's Red go ahead and Jarvan. Take a that's look. literally Red Jarvan. Let's go ahead and take a look Actually, at Dragon Slayer Jarvan. If I want to be serious, though, I think that his base skin is the best skin because of the Frosty skin. And all Frosty skins are awesome. Sure. It's it's true. Frost. Uh, you got me. I feel like you're right, maybe. You I know, on I don't want to dig deep enough to figure it out or not. <laughs> when Braum was first, uh, like, in development... Or LT Grey Brom, his recall animation wouldn't show the Poro escaping, so he would just crush the Poro. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh. They talked about that on the LCS this week. That's funny. Oh, and <laughs> terrible at the same time. Speaking of things that are funny and terrible at the same time, let's round move on table. to the round table. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, the, the table, the Got round, um, not oval. You're Ground. channeling your inner Hillman right I'm now. I'm trying. It's really hard, dude. You can't <laughs> do that. But like, uh, with, uh, yeah. Go Anyways. Go hedron table. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, last week's Indicated. round table. Good one, Nick. Right. Right. Um, last week's round table question was: You you have a double date planned with a friend and his girlfriend, but your date ditches ditches your date ditches um at the last moment. Which champion from the league do you bring to fill their shoes, and why? We got a couple of responses on the Facebooks. Um, I looked into those ones because they are pretty awesome. So um, Sam said that Leona, she she seems bright and she's obviously stunning. I feel like she could really engage on some good conversation. (sighs) (laughs) Rob, please. That's Um, that's that's Those are good, though. Yeah, that's really good. good. And then, of course, we got the the Joshua answer of the week. Um, He just said, Tarek. Because of gems, <laughs> I, 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 every, uh, every week, dude. Um, and then we have, uh, then we have Ashley, who said, um, obviously it would be Draven. He would carry the conversation uh, and impress my friends with both his wit and physique. Plus, who couldn't resist ma- the mustache? I mean, being a Draven semi main, I mean, like Draven's always the answer, right? I'm um, just answer Draven every single week, and I'll probably pick you. Um, so yeah, so that was the table of the round for last week, but this week's round table of the circular variety. Yeah, whatever. Um, so this is going to be super confusing, but I think it will be awesome if we can do this properly, so maybe listen up. Okay? Uh, well, let's not preface this with, this is going to be really confusing. I don't think it's that bad. It, it's kind of confusing, but okay, mm-hmm. anyways. So uh, there's a thread on Reddit, and I kind of took the idea there, but I think we can make it awesome. Um. So it's called time for you to be a time lord. Um, so everyone is going to make a prediction. This prediction has to come to fruition before, I mean, at, at the end of world. So the day that world ends, your prediction has to be true. And then you will get a check mark beside your name for, yeah, it worked. So, for example, I'm like someone could say um, there's going to be a duck champion released by the end of world. OK, that's their prediction. Then all four of us are gonna rate this cha- uh, the rate this prediction on a scale of one to ten. One being, of course, there's gonna be a duck champion released because they already have a teaser out for it, right? Sure. Or ten. Why the hell would they release a duck champion? They just released one last week, right? They did. Um, <laughs> there was a catfish. <laughs> you know what babe. I mean? So like, so the more points you get, the better, right? Because you want more points. Um. So for example, if uh if we all gave you ten and then there was a duck champion released at the end of worlds, then you have 40 points total, and you also have a check mark. So chances are you're going to win the super cool $10 card. That's a RP perfect card. score. Yeah, that yeah. is a perfect score, and it's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, so everyone is going to make a prediction. Uh, then the next week, uh, next week, next Wednesday, we're going to all come back here. We're going to rate your predictions on a scale of 1 to 10. We're going to tally them up, and then uh, we're going to wait, put it back in the time. Uh, we're going to put it in the time capsule, put it in the ground, come back to it after Worlds, and then we're going to see who's going to be our super cool, awesome winner. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so, we're gonna... so you're basically kind of like betting on, you're trying to make it somewhat realistic, but also just far enough out there that you can gar- garner some extra points from us. Or, or don't make it realistic and then just hope. You could say like um, the one that was on Reddit as an example was that Wild Turtle will join Cloud9 as the jungler and they will win worlds. I mean, like, I would give that a 10. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but it can be anything league related. It can be LCS, champion related, anything. And as long as it has a little bit of a league, uh, bit of a relation to it, and we can rate it, I think 
you're you're clear. Yeah, you can't yeah. say something like Donald Trump's going to make another racist comment. And then <laughs> I mean, that's a, to... they're going to get a one anyway. Yeah, they're going to get a one. But you can't I probably say, you wouldn't can't even recognize that. that with points. <laughs> <laughs> can, you, can we give them a negative? I don't know. Uh, maybe. Can we make um, them yeah. pay us ten dollar RP cards? <laughs> And we're also going to rate ourselves, like, just to see where we, like, rate up, we, where we go against each other. I mean, we can't give ourselves a full 10 points, so, I mean, no matter what, we're already capped out at 30, so you better beat us, right? Sure. Um, so, yeah, does anyone want to go first, or? Yes. Chris. Okay, in, in, in the final match, the final matchup in Worlds, in one of those best of five games, somebody is going to play Brand. Okay, I wrote it down. This is okay. important because Brand has never been played in... Well, sorry. I actually looked this up, yet, uh, Chris. He's never been played in NA or EU LCS, but he got played in China in 2014. Yeah, 2014. And soon to be China playing it again in Worlds in 2015. Okay, so what do we want to rate that for, Chris? Because that seems pretty... I'll say that's a 10. Holy I'm shit. thinking more like 8.5. Okay, fuck you, dude. You can... <laughs> <laughs> Brand is going to be picked... Um, I'll give it a... I, we would have said the same thing about Annie before two years ago. Yeah, and that would have been a 10. And I'm going to give it a 6. I honestly don't think it's that... Actually, okay. I'll give it an 8. 8's way better. Wait, so are we not allowed to give our own a rate because then we'll be at a disadvantage? Yeah, I'm saying that we can, we'll can. cap ourselves at 30 points because we're not going to okay. rate our own. Which fair I enough. think is fair. And then, Henderson, you you gave it a um eight an 8.5? Just, just give it an 8, eight dear yeah. lord. Yeah. Great. Perfect. So, Chris, you have... um. Uh, 26 points not bad uh, if it comes true yeah 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 i, th- I think no, I'm... you have 26 points right now That's oh 100%. nice i'm in the lead with yeah, nobody have, else to play 26 with 26 pants cool. 26 pants 26 pants that. motherfucker i don't know why i said that it's weird i've got one a non-asian team will be competing for the very for the finals this year so you're saying like an na EU or chinese team west or na team will make it oh china is part of asia yeah china is part of asia Oh, okay. You're... Yeah, Frost, Frost said so, so a Chinese team, and I was like, China is part of Asia. Yes, they're gonna they're gonna win. You said Canadian Asia. No, I said they're going to compete. I don't know if they're gonna oh. win. I'm saying they're gonna make it to the top two. Okay. I mean, this is, has this happened before, like other than season one. Um, no, no, I, I'm I don't not think really so. Season one. I yeah, would, season one doesn't count. I would probably give this about a five. I think it's much more likely this year than it has been in previous years. I'll go ahead and give it a nine. A nine? Oh. Um, Have you seen how SKT has been playing? But I mean, like, look at Fnatic. I think Fnatic can go with par with... Fnatic been playing in EU? They don't necessarily have to beat SKT to get into the top two. Yeah, he's not... I guess there's no losers... I don't know, this is... I'm gonna gonna give it an eight, honestly. I I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't think that there's any way. And you said... No faith. uh, Nick, what were you gonna give it? Nine. Okay. Yeah, so you have... Uh, 22 points, Henderson. But, yep. Uh, Nick. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, with a little bit of love from Riot, Elise and Diana will be the top two jungler picks for Worlds. So you're saying percentage-wise, uh, they, they both will, or one of them will? They they will be the the top two champions that are picked in band in, in Worlds for jungle. That is very specific, dude. Like, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call that a 10. ten. <laughs> have I'm you guys played against also, Diana dude. Runeglaive? I have. If you think it's going to make it to Worlds, then you're fucking nuts. I is think it, it'll make it to Worlds. Is it different than Diana Runeglaive? <laughs> See, that's the problem. I played against Diana Runeglaive, and Henderson is playing against Diana. What the fuck yeah, are these people too- talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Frost, what about you? Yeah, dude, so my prediction is that... The replay system will be announced. <laughs> um, Eleven. If, Eleven. Honestly, at the end of Worlds, like the the, the very either the uh, so let's just say the sc- stream closes. It's either the replay system will be live then, or they will say it will be coming out next patch at the end of Worlds. Can we vote higher than ten? <laughs> does it go to eleven? Yeah. Does the scale go to eleven? I'd be I'm, willing to give I'm Frost give thirty three points. That I'm giving can't that. happen, so you can't have points. Ever. I'm giving it ten. I'm giving it ten, if only for the moxie. Because Henderson gave you zero, I'm going to give you twenty points. Henderson, <laughs> what do you really want to give me? <laughs> uh, we're going to call it a ten if I have to stay inside of the rules. Is that I'm still going to give you twenty points. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that one's actually possible, dude. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Uh, 
Good, good luck I think with it's that, more mate. likely that they'll announce it and then it won't come out again. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, um, yeah, so, yeah, you guys should, like, uh, leave us your predictions on the Facebooks, the Twitters, the emails, all the cool stuff, and then next week, we will shit-talk your prediction. Actually, no, the number one rule of this is talk it your ass and no one is wrong, so we won't shit-talk your predictions. Um, oh, that won't Well, we already us. broke that rule. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we'll rate your predictions, and hopefully when we come back, we revisit the time capsule in a couple months, you might be the winner. Cool. All right, well, let's move on. Thanks, Frost. Um, let's go into Mail Fight. This show's hey. gone on for a long time. It has, and luckily yeah. Mail Fight's going to be pretty short. We only have one this week. Uh, it's from John. He said, Dear Lee Cast, almost all the 80 carries are the same, except for a few variations here and there. If you could make a new marksman, what would they be like? Abilities, etc. Uh, and then he has a second part, which we'll answer after the first part. So if you if you guys were to design an 80 carry, what what would you make him do? Like, that's I different? Don't, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's different. I don't so know what like, to say. Think of it this way. I, I think he means something like, if you look at Quinn, Quinn is the one AD carry that doesn't fit the mold of traditional marksman because she has a melee form. You know what I mean? Like, is yeah. there any other way that we can alternate the AD, an AD carry to make them unique? I think we're being asked to construct a brand new one that doesn't fit the mold. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, is there... All right, so, at- all right, let's let's do this instead. Let's take the abilities from all the marksmen uh, in the game and let's combine them into one perfection marksman. Yeah. So, and let's let's put some rules down. We can't be savages without rules. Passives can only be on passives. Qs can only be on Qs. Ws on Ws. Es on Es. And ultimates on ultimates. Hold on. Pull up. Let's pull up all the marksmen. We need to do this properly, boys. Okay. I have them all. I'll link you guys to the page. Uh, Draven's kit done. <laughs> okay. So you think Draven uh, is the perfect AD carry? I think I think Draven Q is again. disgusting, and I think that's the perfect Q for an AD carry. Is there any? There's a fewer on this list, by the way. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. But, um, the, the, there's an Urgot on this list. <laughs> that, that counts, so that's fine. Um. So. All right, so passive. Which which champion passive? Do do we Urgot. do we all want to suggest one and then like? Put, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. all suggest one and then we'll vote on which one is the best. Yes. Okay. Urgot. Tristana. What's um, Tristana specific? It makes Tristana her range. Gains, yeah, it gains increases her range oh. level. Oh. Um, um, I'm, going to go, I'm going to go with Draven's passive. Okay, I'll go with Jinx then. Alright, so okay. we have Jinx, Draven. Urgot's passive is what again, Henderson? I don't, believe, I don't remember what it is. 15% damage reduction to anybody who takes damage from you. <laughs> That's a really good passive. <laughs> 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 Alright, so Urgot. The, the damage reduction. Tristana is draw a bead, gain auto attack length. Jinx, you get excited when there's a tower or a uh, or a champion kill. And then Draven, you get the kill from... How would that work with catching axes, though? Oh, yeah, because I guess you'd have to have more of his kit. So just eliminate mine for now. Well, that's one gone. So. Oh, Callista! We'll, we'll replace Draven with Callista. I mean, but she's shit now. Yeah, but her, her passive, passive literally reads 80 carry does 90% of we're gonna attack. ignore. We're gonna ignore that part. Where you just jump every time you auto attack and you're auto attack. That's not canon. That's not canon. That's not canon. It, it, 90% AD is, it was in GT. It wasn't in Dragon Ball Z. go get the lore, please, Frost. <laughs> All right, so are yeah. you picking Callista, Jinx, Tristana, or Urgot's passive? I would vote for Tristana, personally. I, yeah, I would yeah. vote Tristana. I think you're all nuts, because you're not taking the 15% damage reduction on an AD It doesn't carry. matter if you yeah, get but, caught, you're dying either way. Like, I have plans for the rest of this kit that just goes really well with Tristana's passive. we're gonna passive. fuck your Trist- <laughs> We're gonna fuck your kid. Alright, so Tristana's passive is our perfect AD carry passive. Yes. Yeah. So, the Q. Whose Q are we taking? Look at the In list. synergy with the passive, <laughs> Draven's Q. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. <laughs> I think we all agree with that one. <laughs> you know, I don't think there's any need to go look at anything else here. Wait, I uh, I don't know. That's... Yes, what go, if, come on. What please. if we took Jinx's Q, though? Where she gained the range and also gained range from the passive. Uh, mm. Nah. No. And then we're forgetting about Tristana's cool, Q. No, just, you, no. Gotta, you gotta believe, man, because we're my... Not uh, forgetting. I know, I know we're you're, I know you're your W's. Just Do you know my W's? <laughs> At level one. Hold on, can, can I guess what Chris's W is? Because we're taking we're taking that as a Q. Please do it. All right, fine. Is, is it Bio Arcane Barrage? <laughs> no, it's Silver Bolts. Why? No, oh no, my Chris. god! So what's what does Tristana's range get up to max level? I'm just the highest in the game. 
But, okay, it's like, is it 700? No, it's not 700, is it? It's like 600? It's bigger something. than 550, I think. This isn't Caitlyn's 550? Or am I crazy? 550 Zanes. Oh, I'll find it. Hang on. Oh, but, okay, like, okay, oh, so Chris, Chris your, argument, your argument's going to be for silver bolts, right? Mm-hmm. Now I think Chris is fucking <laughs> all right, smoking all right. something. Because Tristana? you need Bio Arcane Barrage to properly abuse the shit out of your range by giving yourself more range. Another okay, 210. Trist <laughs> Trist <laughs> Tristana, um, her range is, I think it gets up to 690, while Kogma's Bio Ar Arcane, no, it gets up to 700. <laughs> While, while Kogma's W gets up to like seven fifteen or seven ten, it looks like. <laughs> Chris, why, the way why that... is, I'm sorry. Why is Fiora on this list? <laughs> She's an AD carry. <laughs> okay, but, but okay. So so okay. Here's my argument for Bio Arcane Barrage. Okay. Uh -huh. So her our our Tristana Jinx thing is already at um seven hundred range max level, right? The way that Bio Arcane Barrage reads is it it's bonus range. So at max level of Bio Arcane Barrage, we have another 210 at range. So therefore, oh we're at 900 and 910 range. Oh my god. god. I think we're already talking bigger than Ezreal Q. Ooh, ooh I've got all the right, ult. If we're, if we're going to go all range, we're going to pick Twitch's ult. Oh, no, that's what I was going to say for the ult. We should do rat attack. -tat. His range oh goes to, up, up to 850. But does that give you a bonus increase? Or yeah, it has to say bonus. 300% oh. bonus attack range. Does it actually bonus say that? attack range? Yep. And so we'd get another to get, and, get the uh, attack range up to twelve fifty. It causes <laughs> his basic attacks to travel across their full range and skewer enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Every enemy they pass. Through. Could you imagine Draven axes just shooting across? <laughs> Could you imagine using a Draven ult as your auto attack? <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> We, have to, okay. we need to. We need what E we, first, yeah, boys. We're picking E's. We're picking E's. Oh, uh, are we gonna pick Rend? <laughs> Why Ooh, not? Ren's not a good one. I mean, it's not uh, a bad why not, one. Why not Arcane Shift, though? That's a good gap. That's a good gap. Oh, that is. Oh, man, I forgot about that. That's you want safest. gap closer on a champion with 1200? No. <laughs> we want. <laughs> well, that's a good point. We have all this range. We don't need to play safe. We need more damage. Oh, no, 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 Nick. I figured it out. I'm pretty sure there was a change a couple patches ago on Vayne for Condemn, which it made it equal to her attack range, if I'm correct. I think right? so. <laughs> I... So you're not using my champion's 1200 units? Let me check if this is correct. Pretty sure it is, though. Range is 550 on Condemn. Okay, damn. Oh, I yeah, so, no, oh, no, no, it's true. But I know, I'm pretty sure they I, th or they put it in line. I thought they made it oh, equal okay. to her attack range. Like, it, I thought that was the change, what it was called. All these AD carry E's are pretty lackluster. Well, Except how, for about, Ezreal. how about Relentless Pursuit? But if, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna choose a dash, then we should just pick Arcane, Arcane Shift. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm dash. thinking, alright, so I'm thinking we ult... All right, we got Draven Axes flying through everything. We got Bio Arcane Barrage. We got the Twitch thing, and then we have Callista Rend, and then we just rend the entire team yes. for like fifteen hundred damage. I'm sold. Well, I don't Do think we that we, I don't think we answered his question. At the same time on this champion. <laughs> I, what? Can I don't we think run? we answered his question, but I, I think we made the best AD carry in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Which I feel like is, this is the AD carry we would create. So I feel like we did answer the question. <laughs> the 1250 range, <laughs> auto attack, flying through everything, rending Jinx passive champion. Callista's just passive, imagine yeah. having somebody, like, accidentally reveal you. Accidentally what? Having somebody accidentally reveal you with the blue trinket, and then all of a sudden <laughs> dying in, like, three auto attacks. Yes. Dude, the only hard part is going to be catching those axes. Could you imagine trying to catch those axes oh, at 1250 yeah. range? Oh my god. Yeah, I would really want the bounce range to like increase too, so like you throw an <laughs> axe in bottom lane and you have to run to mid to catch it. And then the other Draven actually does have a chance to catch it. <laughs> okay, that's the best champion in the game. Uh, we figured it out. Alright, yeah. And then uh, and then we have another question, part two, which I feel like is going to be way shorter. Uh, oh, and could Anivia, Anivia be a decent jungler? No. 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 Wait, wait, does it reset when you pin them to a wall? Wait, does it... wait, guys, we can use Fiora's E. <laughs> oh, the attack speed somehow. and move speed? <laughs> it doesn't count, stop. All right. It's not canon. We already moved fast. The, the answer is uh, no, by the Anivia way. can be a... I, I don't think so. Maybe she could have been with the um the 20% cooldown reduction juggle item, but now it's like a, a Lich Bane Runeglaive, you know, AP item. The same reason, like, Fiddle probably is going to be a shit tier jungler for a while. Mm -hmm. 
It was funny, um, I was playing a ranked game, Nick, and um, my cousin was going to jungle, but this kid also wanted to jungle. He hovers fiddle, and he, my cousin's like, no, fuck this game, and he just locked in ship. <laughs> He's like, no, you're not jungling. <laughs> it's like, if you click fiddle, we lose, so... Unless you go, like, that f season, what was it, that season two or three full tank fiddle that they played yeah. for a, a couple patches? Yeah, but I think Anivia is not that good, unless you can figure out a way yeah. to wall minions off for as long as it takes to kill Even you. Even that early game, that wall has a cool... Yeah. I, I no, I don't think so. If you're gonna play a Nivea, just pick your mid lane or support with the. You trundle. could try it though in a normal yeah, it, game. It is usable. It's not good, but it's usable. Yeah. You and should try it out in a normal game and then tell us his results. Yeah, okay, normal thanks. games don't matter anyway, so just play those. <laughs> that's that's gonna do it for the show though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah oh I'm just gonna God, abruptly wrap around. this up. Yeah, okay. Um, so here are a couple of things. You can find out uh, more information about this show and other shows that we have at warfinch.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Leadcast. You can like us on Facebook. Just search for Leadcast there as well. We have a public TeamSpeak. Join that. Download TeamSpeak 3, the client, for free. Just Google it. And then the server address is ts.leadcastpodcast.com. And make sure you check out our Patreon if you want to help support the show and get some cool shazazzle out of it as well. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash warfinch and that's going to do it for us we'll see you guys next week for episode 186 yeah bye 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 bye, bye.